Hello there. Welcome to Almost 30 Podcast. Hi, everybody. It's Lindsay and Krista. Thank you for being here. Lots of podcasts out there, so we're just always happy that you found us and you keep coming back. Yeah. It means the world. If you're OG or if you're new, we are Almost 30 Podcast. You don't need to be any age to listen. It was just the name of the show that Lindsay and I felt called to call our podcast when we were almost 30. We are over 30 now, but we talk about spirituality, wellness, personal growth, entrepreneurship sometimes, but we like to keep it really honest, really real, and just provide you information that's going to make your life better. Truly. When we had our 500th episode recently, somehow I got into like a hole of like seeing old photos and old videos of us. And it was literally like, I was like, who is that person? (laughs) Who? who's that person like even just whether it's facial expressions or like little little just like movement I don't know it was like very bizarre to see myself even though I'm me but I was like whoa yes (laughs) I know it's 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 so hard because I just and in this episode so we go into the life edit and we talk a little bit about doing a digital life edit which we can explain what that is but it's hard when you're doing either looking at old pictures or looking at old videos and photos and maybe you're looking at you know old emails or text messages and to not feel judgmental of yourself because I I so hard do that like I was even archiving a lot of photos in my Instagram because I'm updating my Instagram so it feels more like a website because I think Instagram feels to me like it's used more from an SEO perspective rather than a um, blog because I think before it was like post as much as you can just post a photo captions don't matter and now I think people go to people's Instagram almost like a website to see what they're about so I want it to feel more like a museum rather than like just like a the newsstand so I was Mm -hmm. archiving old photos and old pictures and I was just like oh my god I am trying so hard to not feel like so judgmental of this content (laughs) it was so hard Uh, I was like (sighs) in what way like (sighs) was it what you were saying it just was like what's the point (laughs) you know it's all like what's the point of this the filters were popping I mean the filter game it was almost like all of it and I guess this is what Instagram is but it all kind of felt like a flex like it was like when I'd travel I would post like you know there was less honesty and vulnerability I think than I do Mm. now and I'm much more truthful now but even now it's funny because I I was coming up to the post where I was sharing more about my thoughts my opinions my perspectives and even reading posts where I was being vulnerable years ago I was like oh my god no (laughs) you know like you're just like oh no like even protective of myself I'm like babe you can't say that like you know what I mean I'm like no Mm. don't talk about that like don't say that you just get protective but judgmental and then sometimes you're like wow I look great and like what was I doing then you know you also have that conversation in your head too Mm -hmm. yeah and it's an interesting thing to like you know look back and kind of see because I agree we were much more I feel like we shared much more without a sensitivity to maybe like who or what it was about and at least for me and I just, I feel like I have more of just a filter now that's healthy for my relationships, friendships, Sean, my family. And it's helped me to, I don't know, just like feel like I'm in the relationship rather than talking about it in like a roundabout way on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's like less of this distance. Yeah, I do. It's it's hard though because... If our job is to share and, you know, be open, I've been having a hard time with that recently. I'm like, I don't want to talk about anything else because I have something going on in my life. And it's Mm -hmm. like anything else feels inauthentic. But then I'm like, I'm not. But then I'm like only sharing when I feel good, you know, so it's such a weird balance. It's like, but I don't want to be someone that's only sharing when I feel bad because I do find there is that kind of attention that people garner on Instagram as well. You know, there'll be influencers that will kind of only share when they're going through hard things. And that will sort of be 
their way to get attention is sort of keeping you in this like loop of feeling sorry for them or feeling like attached to their roller coaster of emotions and expressions. Mm -hmm. And I was noticing that as well a few um, a few months ago where you know I was kind of following this like one influencer which just kind of represents, you know, a broader a broader theme. But I was noticing how this person was sharing all of these issues that they had been going through and it's truthful and right, you know. But then I was also noticing how much time their followers were spending being in communication and response and support and offering love and prayer, not even prayers, but like offering just all of these comments and, and like love to this person. And I'm like, how often do people do that for themselves? You know, how often is the person that's spending so much time writing this really long caption in response to someone they've never met in their entire life, giving themselves that love and attention. And it just really freaked me out like I was mm -hmm. like oh my god you don't know this person at all and like they could be just really manipulative and they're really wanting your attention and they're mm -hmm. getting it in this way this could be really truthful and it's really something they're going through and then you're giving them attention which is really kind but it's like we kind of need to pull back our energy and attention to ourselves and to our lives not that I'm saying you shouldn't be kind and nice online to people. That's absolutely not the point. It's really meaningful to me when people share really kind things to me. It, it, it really impacts me. But just how can we give ourselves that love first is really my point. Yeah. And just noticing when there's an imbalance, when you are perhaps commenting or supporting outwardly more than you are towards yourself. And usually you can kind of feel the nuance of that imbalance. It can feel like you're really tired, you're uninspired, you're maybe a little bit sad and you don't know why. Like I've definitely been through little periods like that where I was just like putting out so much and not really directing it towards myself. And yes. um, especially digitally, it can be kind of sneaky how that happens because we don't think that, you know, whether it's social media or email or what, whatever can be kind of pulling at us unknowingly. Yeah, it's huge. I was even, I was checking email the other day and I was like, for the rest of my life, will I be receiving emails? <laughs> like, I'm just yeah. like. I want to cut it off at like 65, uh, maybe. Maybe earlier. Yeah, every I'm single down. day for the rest of my life, unbeknownst to me, people can email me. Either brand, you know what I mean? It's like by choice <laughs> and not by choice. People get to email you every single day. That is so crazy because each time you get an email your brain is thinking okay what do I do with this yeah and you know when we're talking about this episode today which really is um, a portion of the life edit so the life edit is a program that I'm launching that's coming up you can do the five-day free mini life edit challenge right now but really the life edit is helpful helping you to align closer to your highest self by giving you actionable tips and practices that you can do today so a portion of that is the digital life edit um, so we just talked a little bit about some of the tools and tricks and steps you can take within that but it's so important because your brain whenever you're looking at your desktop your email your phone your texts you know your instagram all these things it's it's working like it's not just like passively looking at twenty thousand emails on your um on your phone or on your desktop it's not just looking at a messy desktop and just thinking like oh i'll get to that later like it's actually thinking every single time about what it needs to do next and what you need to do so it's taking a lot of energy subconsciously when you have sort of a digit a messy digital life or a digital life that you don't feel proud of or you don't feel aligned with what was like the most profound shift in the digital realm that you made for yourself I think this is the one that's kind of more so in the program uh, that people can do it's very very woo woo but then it's very actionable so it's like very both I think a powerful one is like deleting all of your old text messages and threads and emails from like old partners or old friends and so it's like how can even dms how can you collapse old timelines and really clear cords and cut cords digitally in your life or dissolve mm -hmm. cords to support you in really being in the here and now. 
And when we think about, you know, our text messages as an example, I didn't realize that every single text message, group thread, random text message from Postmates, all these different things were existing on my phone. Mm -hmm. And those are essentially very, very small, but those are all open timelines. So it's like, how can I clean up my text message threads so that they only represent the timelines and the people in my life that I want to continue conversation with? And how can I just continue to keep those really clear? And then you can take that same practice and principle to your emails, you know, checking on, do you have emails from your ex? Do you have emails from friends you're no longer friends with? Do you have emails from old jobs or old companies, things that like no longer support you in this version of you? I think collapsing timelines is one of my favorite parts of it. Yeah, I love that one. I'm actually going to mm-hmm. go through it. It's, it's actually freaking me out to think that I have text messages from ex-boyfriends still on my phone. I know. Honestly, I have an old, <laughs> I have an old cell phone and I was like thinking, I'm like, dude, I want to I want to power that baby up and see what the fuck is up. <laughs> I would like, I would love to just get a little just see, high. See the flirt just game like, that yes. you used to have? <laughs> yes. And just see what the hell was going on. Like what kind of photos, what kind of, what kind of vibe you had. Um, another one that's really simple that I actually forgot to include in this is unroll me so it's unroll me and you can sign up for unroll me it's free and you can unsubscribe to mailing lists and newsletters so it basically gives you the option to look on an interface or a dashboard at every single newsletter or email subscribing list you are currently subscribed to and then you can unclick and unsubscribe just in that dashboard and interface so that's really really helpful just to prevent and help you know, unclog your emails and inboxes because we're subscribed to so many lists that some we, some we have agreed to, some we haven't. And I think that's really helpful just to take a few minutes to do that. Mm. Powerful. And this Mm -hmm. is just one slice of the life edit. So what other aspects that can people expect in the actual program? Yeah, so this is just a portion of the digital part. So in the program, the digital is much more built out. There's playlists and rituals, um, and then there's audio from me, and then we'll have our call. So it's much more built out, but I just wanted to give people a taste because this one feels super actionable and truthful. Um, But what else is included is a spatial life edit. So I'm obsessed with the spatial one because it has a lot of feng shui. It has a lot of like different principles and practices that you can really do today in your life and see change immediately because from a feng shui perspective um you know the luck that you have in your life is 33 percent um contributed to by your space so if you have a space that is from a feng shui perspective setting yourself up for success you have a 33 percent chance of having better luck in your life and i've applied a lot of the principles and it's just been so powerful so there's spatial there's relational so that's checking in on your relationships their health their honesty their truth there's mental health checking in on your mental health mm-hmm. there's wellness checking in on your routines and wellness and then lastly that there's financial so checking in on your financial life and as you all know everyone that listens to the podcast these are all very strategic practices my virgo rising and four houses in capricorn wanted to make it super strategic and actionable but also it's very nuanced and it's very energetic because you know there is a reason why maybe you have a messy house or a financial life that doesn't feel in order or conversations that are left unsaid so we're also really addressing the root cause of a lot of these um, issues or a lot of these um, subconscious conversations that are actually Mm -hmm. happening that are creating the conscious existence that we have today Um, so the program is going to be incredible we're going to have six live calls with me where we'll do some group work we'll do a lot of the energetics during that time and then you'll get audio with each week you'll get a playlist that you can listen to while you're you know doing all the actions and practices within the life edit program and then I have a meditation visualization that's going to be really helpful for the subconscious part of it Beautiful. I'm excited because it's, I feel like it's the perfect time with spring, yes. change of seasons. It's like corny to say, but it's so true. There's like a powerful turnover. So um, I'm excited to do it along with Same. you all. So if you want to do the mini challenge, which is free. So I have five days of um, actionable resources and practices from the Life Edit. You can sign up for that today at lifeeditbykrista.com. That's life edit by krista.com that's krista k-r-i-s-t-a and then when i have the program live you can sign up for that program as well at life edit by krista.com but if you join the free challenge right now you'll have all the information about the program when it is live in april you can go to life edit by krista k-r-i-s-t-a.com beautiful 
All right, y'all enjoy this episode. I'm excited. Send it to a friend. If you know a friend who you want to do the life edit with, send this episode to them. It means a lot to us. Thanks for listening. We appreciate you so much. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at almost three zero podcast. We now have a TikTok. Yes, baby. We're on TikTok, baby. We're, We're tick tacking. <laughs> We're tick tacking. Your, Your moms, moms are tick tacking. <laughs> yeah, Pray for us. Check us out there, but we will see you on the other side of this one. We'll be back in just a moment. But first, we want to share a little bit about the sponsors who support this episode. Okay, so when it comes to personal hygiene, who has time to read that long list of ingredients on the back of the bottle? Sometimes it's dizzying and frustrating. I can't even pronounce what's in some of these products. And if you're like me and Krista and care about what goes in and on your body, then it's time to try native personal care products like we did. We are absolutely obsessed. Every native product is thoughtfully formulated to keep you feeling and smelling fresh all day long. So they're best known for their aluminum-free deodorant, and we love it. I keep recommending it to people. I'm going to share my favorite flavors in a second. Um, Basically, you might be using deodorant that has aluminum in it, and Native is obsessed with keeping their ingredients bare naked, just ingredients that you understand like coconut oil, shea butter, and baking soda. And Native deodorant checks a lot of boxes, 24-hour odor protection, naturally dry ingredients. It's smooth. It goes on so smooth. Residue-free application, and they have over 10 scents to choose from. My favorite is the coconut and vanilla. It is a cult favorite, apparently. I also really love the lavender and rose. It's a nice, sweet scent. Recently, Nated partnered with Baked by Melissa with a collection of scents inspired by Baked by Melissa's delicious cupcake creations from tie-dye vanilla cupcake, mint cookie cupcake, fresh peach cupcake to ginger lemonade cupcake. They are sure to make your day a little bit sweeter. I'm I'm into this. (laughs) I think I'm going to get the tie-dye vanilla cupcake. Um, But it's time to make a switch from an antiperspirant to Native. When you visit their site, you can discover all their fresh scents and maybe even try out one of their moisturizing body washes while you're at it. I love their products. Safe to use on the body. My skin absolutely loves Native deodorant. So smell and feel fresh all day long with Native. Get 20% off your first order by going to nativedeo.com slash almost 30 or use the promo code almost 30 at checkout. That's nativedeo.com slash almost 30 or use the promo code almost 30 at checkout for 20% off your first order. Welcome to another solo episode with me, Krista. I'm really excited about this one. I've been so inspired in the past couple weeks because I've been in the process of creating the Life Edit course. So there's a mini challenge which has some actionable tips and insights for the Life Edit, which leads into the actual Life Edit program. This has been something that's been on my mind and my heart for a while now. I actually did my first Life Edit episode, episode 294, on the podcast, and it was one of our most popular episodes, definitely one of my favorites. And the Life Edit was really inspired by a challenging time that I had in late 2019. For anyone who's intuitive or a little psychic or um, has certain gifts, Sometimes we can catch the feelings of the collective before they happen. So I was feeling and intuiting 2020, and so I fell into this depression where I could see all the shadow work that was coming my way in 2020. I could see the collective shadow work that was coming my way, and I chose to stay in Los Angeles for the holidays and just really sink in, let it happen, figure it out, and be with my shadow during that time. And in my depression, I first started therapy, which has been a really important part of my journey, but I got so inspired to really look at my life and really take an honest look at what my life looked like and why I wasn't in a place and space where I was aligned to that highest self, where I was on that highest timeline. I know in the spirituality space, there's visualization, there's law of attraction, there's manifestation, um, there's affirmations, there's all these different things, 
things that I do regularly. But as four houses in Capricorn and my Virgo rising, I wanted to figure out a way to make it really actionable and make a process for myself that would support my alignment to my highest timeline. You know, like what actual things can I do in the 3D world while I'm doing the other things in the woo-woo space? So it's really the mix of the strategy and the woo-woo. I had to get really honest with myself, you know, during this time and in the life edit, I had to really see if I brought awareness to every area of my life and asked hard questions like, do I need this thing? Do I want this? Is this serving me? Do I want to be this person? Do I want to show up in this way? Does this outfit, does this relationship, does this habit, does this book, does this couch (laughs) serve my highest expression? It can be very tangible. And as you know, with people that do visualization often, when we are visualizing and getting really clear about our vision for our dream life, for our dream relationship, for our dream career, we need to be very, very specific. So when we are specific, that is almost our guide for the place that we want to move towards. And the life edit really helps you do that. So when I am visualizing my highest self, what am I wearing? What is that highest version of me wearing? What does her house look like? What does her desktop of her computer look like? How does she care about her mental health? How does she approach her relationships? How does she approach her body or her wellness routine? How does she approach her career? It can be really big and then it can be really, really small. You know, even thinking about your future version, what does her cell phone look like? How many emails are on it? What kind of photos are on her social media? How is it organized? Like what is your dream version of yourself and what actions, steps, or practices can we bring through in your life right now, even though we don't have everything, we're not living in the exact alignment of that highest version of yourself. So this is really a lot of the work of Joe Dispenza, you know, in this future self visualization, which is so powerful. Joe Dispenza says, every time you make the decision to believe in your future with that level of energy, you're sending out a big signal that creates big ripples in the quantum field. If you keep doing this enough times, you're conditioning your body to a new mind. You're combining a thought and a feeling, an image and an emotion, and a stimulus and a response. This is how you condition your brain and body into a new future. So the process of the life edit is really aligning your brain and body to the highest self in the present moment right now. Through the process of the life edit, the course is going to be really, really detailed. There's a lot of different sections and there's a lot of different rituals and I made sure that the energetics were all covered as far in addition to the tactical. So there's a lot of energetics and there's a lot of tactical. What I wanted to do in this episode today is encourage you to first listen to the first episode of the Life Edit to get inspiration. So that's episode 294. But I wanted to go into the digital part of the Life Edit. So this isn't going to be all encompassing of everything that's in the program, but there's going to be so, so, so much tactical information and resources and steps for you in the digital life edit. So the reason why I'm so obsessed with the digital life edit, as someone that remembers getting Facebook when I went to college and I wanted to friend every single person on the planet, whether I knew them or not, because I was like, I must have thousands of friends on Facebook. And as someone that had hilarious statuses on Facebook that said, you know, sometimes lyrics to songs, sometimes weird inside jokes, who knows? As someone that had photo albums of like ridiculous, silly things throughout my life, nothing bad, but just like, wow, what is going on? I am someone that grew up in the digital age when stuff started to really, really pick up. So we started texting when I was in college, which is hilarious. And um, I have basically, I've had Instagram since 2012. For people that are younger, you're going to have more of a digital imprint that exists and you're going to have more of a need for a digital life edit. But every single person, if you are on the internet, you can do a digital life edit. And this doesn't only include your uh, public facing life on the internet. This also includes your email, your phone, your desktop. 
um, your privacy settings, your profiles on certain pages, like it's pretty expansive. And I really thought about this, you know, if you are someone that is in as a public figure or you're looking for jobs or you're looking for dates or, you know, you're someone that just lives online, people search people on Google, people search people on Instagram, people search people on LinkedIn, people search people on Twitter. And you have a lot of information that is out there about you if someone was to search your name. Some of it would be information you're proud of and some of it would be like, this does not align to me. And I'm not talking about, um, you know, inappropriate information or inappropriate sayings or things related to cancel culture. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when you are sharing just things that are like, I'm, that was me 10 years ago. That was me five years ago. That was me three years ago. That was an old relationship. That was an old version of me. Like, how can we make the digital version of you that exists in the world today, which is essentially sort of like a hologram, um, up to date with the person that you are? How can we make ourselves feel really good about our, cell, our digital footprint? And this is also really important from like a safety and privacy perspective. So when we think about all the information that exists about us in the digital world, whether that's photos or statuses or passwords or accounts or email subscriptions, whatever it is, there's a lot. So it's really, really smart now that we've been online for a good amount of time for a, a lot of our lives and a lot of time in our lives, it's really smart for us to think about how we can do a digital life edit. So technology is such a big part of our lives. I mean, we're usually on our phone for hours and hours a day between work, entertainment, and even just, you know, mindless scrolling. So why should your inbox and socials feel cluttered, overwhelming, and unaligned with who you want to be? I would love for us to go into the technology portion of the life edit at a high level so we can work on clearing out our phone, email, social accounts, and just like our digital footprint to reflect how we want to feel and be projected out into the world. We hope you're enjoying this conversation. We're going to take a few moments to share brands with you that we love and who support this show. How many of you out there use your laptop computer on your actual lap? I'm sure there's a lot of you, whether you're in front of the TV, maybe you're traveling and you have it on your lap and you're working away. Well, I have a hack for you and something to protect you from radiation. This is the anti-radiation shield, EMR and heat blocking lap desk with a storage pouch. It's from Safe Sleep. I adore Safe Sleeve because all of their products are tested, lab tested. It's not just like slapping on, oh, anti-radiation. No, they do lab testing. Their goals when they started Safe Sleeve were to educate the public on the dangers of electronic device radiation and to provide the world's best solutions, and they have done that. Safe Sleep anti-radiation products are designed to give you the peace of mind of knowing you and your devices are protected while making your devices even easier to use. All of these products, including this uh, anti-radiation desk that you can put your laptop on, um, incorporate their lab-tested shielding technology that can block over 99% of RF and 92% of ELF radiation. There are very few anti-radiation brands that offer lab-tested protection. Theirs is publicly on their website, so you can check it out at safesleevecases.com. That's safesleevecases.com cases.com and use the code almost 30. You're going to get 10% off. They have cases for your phones, all of your electronic devices that you use. They got you. They also have magnetic car mounts. Uh, they have anti-radiation air tube headphones. Check it out. Safesleevecases.com. Use the code almost 30 for 10% off your first purchase. Ah, Probiotics. There's a ton of them out there and it can be hard to discern which one is right for you. Krista and I have found the probiotic for us. In fact, it's actually a daily symbiotic, which is even more powerful. So this is a broad spectrum two-in-one probiotic and prebiotic. It's a proprietary formulation of 24 distinct probiotic strains in scientifically studied dosages. This is why we love seed like plain and simple. 
they are backed by science. <laughs> Check out their website. You will learn so much about the science of the daily symbiotic. It is fascinating. So this proprietary engineered two-in-one capsule that protects probiotics through digestion, because sometimes if they're not protected, it won't make it to your intestines uh, or even to your gut to ensure delivery to the colon. This is what this capsule does. If you've taken a probiotic before and never felt a difference, this is likely because the good bacteria wasn't surviving your GI tract. Seed is designed differently and that is why it works. Okay, so I've been taking it for about three weeks. Now I kind of fell off my probiotic train and yo, I feel such a difference. This eases bloating. I am very regular in a very healthy way. Um, and I don't have any constipation, anything like that. But this also has shown up in the health of my skin. Um, I just noticed that when my gut is off, if I've had too much cheese or gluten or just like weird stuff, uh, it will show in my skin. But taking this daily symbiotic has made such a difference. Many people see improvements in digestion within 24 to 48 hours. So I want you to try seed. We're so excited for you to try seed. Start a new healthy habit today. Visit seed.com slash almost 30 and use code almost 30 to redeem 20% off your first month of seeds daily symbiotic. That's seed.com slash almost 30 S E E D.com slash almost 30 and use code almost 30 for 20% off your first month. So just as a messy house can cause many people a meltdown, there's actually data around this that when, you're, when your house is messy or when your home office is messy, your brain actually goes into beta brainwave state. So in chaos, your brain goes into beta brainwave state. This is not the state that you want to be in if you are creating, if you are in action, if you are wanting to produce your best work. So it's actually been proven that your brain goes into a different state when you have a messy space. We also know it too. For anyone that's now working from home or has had to work from home, we know what it's like when our apartment is dirty. We don't feel good about working when there's stuff all over the table, when the dishes are dirty, when there's laundry to be folded. I don't know about you, but if the place is messy, I cannot start my day. And you guys, I'm not the cleanest of people. I'll be real. I'm not the cleanest of people, but I just can't anymore. It's like a complete energy suck. And what happens is there's a residue. So say you walk into your apartment and the laundry is not folded and it's just sitting in the the laundry bin. Every time you're going to walk past it and you say, oh, I need to do the laundry. You're thinking that in your head. I need to do the laundry. Or there's dishes in the sink. You're like, got to do those dishes. So there's this residue that's built up when there's a mess. Things are communicating. There's energy all around us, you know, from a feng shui perspective that's communicating with us and our subconscious at all times. So how can we be more mindful and set ourselves up for the best and highest energetic alignment in our physical space? and in our digital space. So in the Life Edit program, we go deep into the physical space. There's so much feng shui that I was able to add and I'm so excited about it. But there was a recent survey by you know a global services company called Adaptivist that showed most people spend about 45 minutes a day searching through digital information to find either a report or email or some super important tidbit that they need for work or family. So that is a whopping 22 hours a month, nearly 11 days a year. So this is due to people not having a handle on or organization around their digital footprint. I do this a lot. You know, I'm like, even today, I was like, where do I where's that thing that I have? Where's that agreement? Where's that form? Where's that thing? So how can our digital, you know, life support us in being more effective? There also was a survey that showed that the average office worker spends just over four hours per day on their work email. It's 20 hours a week, more than a thousand hours per year, and 47 hours or 47,000 hours over the course of of their career. So that's about five years of your life. So only about a quarter of people refrain from checking their emails into the office. Most of us do it at home. So if we are spending that much time on our email, how can we make this a pleasurable 
ease-filled experience. You know, it doesn't have to be like, yay, email always comes into my inbox and I'm excited, but how can we make that as like less stressful, organized as possible? There's a lot of people that do Operation Inbox Zero, or I don't, is it, I don't know if it's called Operation. <laughs> they do Inbox Zero, Operation Inbox Zero. Um, one of those, but basically the goal is to have an inbox of zero. So that could be something that you're doing within this. I don't have that, but I do clean out my email every single time I'm doing a life edit. I have around a hundred in each of my boxes. They can be filed away and not. Um, we can go into that later. So are we convinced that our digital life is important and should be edited? Yes. Yes, we are. Okay, let's go through some tips and tactical ways that we can support ourselves in having that highest version of ourselves exist digitally in the world, having our holograms <laughs> that exist, that our egos love so much, updated, having an updated system, updating the system. You guys, we got to update the matrix every once in a while. It's got to keep it up to date with who we want to be seen as in this moment. So one of the first ways that I like to do a digital life edit, so I'm gonna give you some of the tips, um, just some high level things that are really tactical for you in this episode. Again, there's gonna be so much more and there's gonna be more of the energetic work um, in the actual program. But what I'd love to do within the digital life edit is to go through your camera roll. So go through your camera roll and you can delete old photos that you no longer wanna hold on to, old screenshots and duplicates. As an example, as someone that is a public figure, as someone that is someone that, um, you know, has an audience, we have, you know, feedback and people that say things all the time. Sometimes people say really kind things and I screenshot them. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to save that for a rainy freaking day. I'm going to save that when I need it, when I want to smile, when I just need a little love. So that is a great suggestion. You can make a happy folder and put those things in a happy folder. But then sometimes people got beef. People have beef with what I say, who I am, how I do it, blah, blah, blah. And you screenshot that. And sometimes I screenshot it and share it with the team just to be like, hey, we got to respond to this. Let's let them know that we heard them, whatever. So not only are a lot of times people sharing, um, keeping really positive things, but we're also keeping those negative things. So at times we want to remove those from our phone. Those are going to be screenshots or say you broke up with someone might want to remove those from your phone or say you have tons of duplicates. I think this is what happens, especially, you know, as a content creator, I have four of the same photo of everything. It's just something that we do when we hold our phone. We just keep tapping <laughs> of the same thing. I have two baby cats that I adopted. There are thousands of photos of those babies and we need all of them, but we sometimes don't need the duplicates. So how can we go through and sort of let go of any you know, photos or conversations we don't need, silly screenshots that we never needed of, you know, our prescription. Um, how can we get rid of the old photos from our camera roll? Well, one of my favorite ways to do that is through an app called Smart Cleaner App. Smart Cleaner App. I pay for it. There's also a free version. This isn't sponsored. So I had over 25,000 photos on my phone. Most were duplicates or were screenshots. And I was able to delete the photos in batches during walks by using the Smart Cleaner app. So what it does is it, look for it looks for duplicate photos on your phone and allows you to choose, hey, let's keep the best one. Let's keep the ones where my eyes are open. Let's keep the clearest ones. Let's keep, you know, the brightest lighting for these and it helps you get rid of tons of phone so what tons of photos from your phone so an example on my morning walk I would start by looking at a certain time frame in the smart cleaner app I would say hey let's look at all the photos from 2013 to 2015 and then I was able to basically filter from there and delete all the photos that I wanted to delete. Then I'd move from 2015 to 2017, whatever that process was. But I highly recommend doing this on your Smart Cleaner app that will really help to consolidate and clean up all the photos on your phone. When I did a poll on my Instagram a few weeks ago, I said, how many photos do you all have on your phone? The numbers ranged from 4,000 to 40,000, you know, it just, it gets wild. And I would also say that if you are going through your photos in this way, you can also make it really special and sentimental and nostalgic. I think when I was looking at old photos and conversations and screenshots, I mean, I found screenshots from 
when Justin and I first started dating, you know, 10 years ago, and it just ah, warmed my little heart. So there's a lot of nostalgia and emotions that will also come up during things like this when you're doing activities like this. And that is an important part of the life edit. Honestly, there's so much emotion that um, we hold with things like this, with clothes, with our furniture, with relationships, with old photos. You know, we kind of overlook that sometimes when we're doing these type of things, but there's going to be a lot of emotions that potentially come up. For me, sometimes maybe I'd look at photos and be like, oh, wow, I was so much prettier then. <laughs> I was so much like happier then. Or, you know, we kind of always have these judgments. So just be mindful of those when those come up as well. Always bringing kindness, loving kindness and awareness to that. Just being like, wow, I really love the one who thought it was okay to go to the tanning bed all the time. <laughs> And just how can we bring kindness to that past version of ourselves? How can we bring not judgment to that past version of ourselves, etc.? So the Smart Cleaner app, go through your photos. Okay. You can also have the Smart Cleaner app or you can do this yourself without it. Go through contacts on your phone and delete anyone that you haven't spoke to recently. Your Tinder date from five years ago that you have just as what they were wearing or you have a nickname for them, maybe they don't need to be there anyways. There is an energetic quality to this, to when we delete contacts and photos. We are collapsing old timelines that exist. We are closing old portals. These are not very powerful portals, but they are portals nonetheless. So I had around 400 contacts maybe, and I now have maybe 100. You know, there were so many that I acquired over time that were just random contacts that I didn't really needed. And cleaning that out was just also like, okay, who's coming with me to the next step? Who's going to be with me in this next version of my life? Who's going to be a part of my up level and my expansion? And pretty much is going to be the contacts and the people that I kept in my phone for social media. So social media is a huge one. I'm excited to talk to you about this one. This one's going to be Great. I love this. I've been doing this um, recently as well. So we're doing it together if you're doing it. Doing a full audit of your socials. So doing a full audit of your social media. This includes Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Snapchat, TikTok, wah, wah, wah. This includes the whole freaking social world that exists. Make sure everything on there, on every social media platform, from your photos to your retweets to the accounts you follow, reflect who you are today and what you want to put out in the world. It's okay to unfollow people. It's okay to, you know, unsave things. It's okay to um, update things. It's okay to delete accounts and sort of consolidate. Your social present is about so much more than how the world perceives you from an outside perspective. It's really a reflection of who you are now and it should evolve as you do. So if you're no longer aligned to a certain account or person or perspective, maybe you're kind of collapsing that timeline as well. It's important to be confident in the version that exists of you today and how that is reflected online. So you should really feel proud of your online persona because it showcased your most authentic self today. And we just need to give that, you know, a little system update. Maybe you have in your Instagram bio, your little circle photo. Maybe it's a photo of you from five years ago. And maybe you're holding on to it because you're like, oh, I'll never look like that again. Or I feel like that was like when I looked the best. How can we be really honest with ourselves and update that photo to be the version of you that exists today? And by updating it to a photo that you took recently that you really love, how are we honoring the version of you that is the, in the here and now instead of always thinking like the past version of you, maybe it was like at your wedding or something, was the best photo of you. So updating all of your photos so that everything feels really good and fresh and you can be really proud of the person you are today. We'll be back in just a moment, but first we want to share a little bit about the sponsors who support this episode. Starting your own business can be a roller coaster. Krista and I know firsthand there's fear, there's excitement, there's the unexpected. Um, and there's also that feeling of being in over your head at some points. You know, with every up level, there is a moment or a few moments where we just feel like we're in over our head. But 
We've realized that with the right tools, we can juggle all of it with confidence. And we want to share this with you. I know a lot of you out there are starting your own businesses, or perhaps you're on a team where you can optimize the workflow, optimize the relationship with your clients. HoneyBook. HoneyBook gives you all the tools you need to manage inquiries, legal contracts, scheduling, payment processing, and everything it takes to serve clients. They make it super easy to give clients a great experience. I know you want to do that. It organizes your client communications, bookings, contracts, invoices, payments, and so much more all in one place. So a lot of independent professionals use HoneyBook to manage their workflow and cash flow. It just minimizes the steps in your process. It's so, so easy to use. You are going to limit the back and forth between your clients. They are going to be happy with that flow. There's no more bouncing from system to system. Stay organized with HoneyBook. You can start your free trial at honeybook.com slash almost 30 and enjoy 30% off your first year, no matter which plan you choose. That's a pretty big discount. I would take advantage. Invest in yourself, in your business. Honeybook.com slash almost 30. 30% off your first year year, the entire year. Okay. Head to honeybook.com slash almost 30 to get started for free. Uh, I have a skin hack. It's beauty from within peaks daily radiance. That's P I Q U E peak. Oh, you've done it again. So as you know, natural collagen production starts to slow down in our 20s. We've talked about this on Almost 30. And what I didn't know is that vitamin C is vital in the production of collagen and plays a key role in keeping it plump, supple, and glowing. So I am upping my vitamin C and I am doing that with Peak's Daily Radiance. This is a liposomal vitamin C that is maximized for absorption to support healthy, glowing skin and provide immune support. It's full of antioxidants from organic elderberry. It's so good. It's a superfood that tastes immaculate. So this will help smooth and brighten the skin for that dewy glow and help combat hyperpigmentation from the inside out. It's a super good addition to my skincare routine. I take it every single morning and there's only seven clean ingredients in it. It's truly a beauty wellness shot that I look forward to every single day. It's in a single serve packet and I just take it right down. There's no uh, soy, no refined sugars or preservatives and it's non-GMO. All right, y'all go to peaklife.com slash almost 30. That's P-I-Q-U-E-L-I-F-E.com slash almost 30 and you'll get 10% off plus free shipping and a free peak sampler pack with six of their best-selling flavors. So head over to peaklife.com slash almost 30. That's P-I-Q-U-E-L-I-F-E.com slash almost 30. So here are some things I look at on each platform when we're talking about a digital life edit. Instagram, old photos, memes, or Instagram story highlights. So what I've been doing is archiving old photos on my Instagram because I actually think that from a marketing perspective and even just in general, Instagram is now almost a search engine rather than a social media platform. So when someone says, hey, do you know this person or do you know this practice or do you know about this thing? Our generation and generations below us actually use Instagram as a search engine and not anything else. So they're like, who's this person? Krista Williams. Most people, maybe half and half of people that are listening are going to go to Instagram. Some will go to Google and to see and to see and learn about who this person is. So I've been archiving old photos that just don't really feel like they serve a purpose. You know, I had a lot of blogging and fashion and style photos and travel. I had so many beautiful travel photos, but it, and it's beautiful and incredible, but they don't really serve a purpose for the sta- stage I'm at in my life just because what do I want to say versus what do I want to show? I have so much more I want to say and I really want to be known for specific things. So how can my page reflect those important pillars of who I am and how I want to be perceived online? So I'm archiving tons of old photos. I'm updating my story highlights, making sure they feel current. My bio needs to be current and just making sure even on my saved, you know, when you save things that those still feel really good and and organized as well. Twitter, outdated tweets, outdated retweets you know when I started Twitter in 2010 12 who knows 
I remember just like going to Mexico, bish. <laughs> you know, just was kind of like a, a li- it would just be like flex sentences where it was like, yeah, no sleep. You know, it was just kind of like just very random flexy and like song lyrics and just bizarre, which is all good. We love that version of ourself. Peace and love. She was amazing. But, you know, if I'm thinking of my digital archive, it's probably not things I want anymore. It's just, it's really unnecessary. So checking in on your outdated tweets and retweets, you can go to search on Twitter. Um, They have a search feature that allows you to search for keywords or search in very specific ways on your Twitter. Facebook, if you have Facebook still, I'm not really sure. Old photos, just checking in on those, maybe making sure anything that you're tagged in feels good and feels aligned to you. Um, posts, you know, some posts that I had were just so silly. Like I was like, Florida twice a month. This is amazing. Like just so silly. Tagged photos as well. So just kind of cleaning it all up, making sure it feels like a good version of you. If you had a profile to exist in the world, would you want this quote on there? Would you want this tagged photo? What do you want to say you know, what do you want to represent as you digitally? Pinterest, any boards that don't feel like you. You know, I had a board that was like body goals, which is all good. They're really beautiful, amazing bodies, but I'm just kind of like, yeah, doesn't really feel like me anymore to have like a board that is reflecting back to me bodies that aren't mine as a goal. So how can I get rid of that? Because it doesn't feel like me. You know, it was a great time. It was a great for inspiration, but it doesn't feel like me anymore to be, to have a board that is body goals. Definitely updating all your profile photos and bios so they reflect you in the now, maybe even that highest version of yourself. How can your bio be that expanded, beautiful, special version of you? How can it be, you know, that brightest version of you? It's really fun to go back and see how you used to describe yourself, you know, and look at how that's changed or evolved. Make sure you're also paying attention to things like LinkedIn, especially if you're in the corporate world. How can you build out your profile or your bio or your work to represent all the amazing things you've done? I think that's an important thing too, is like how are how is our digital imprint a representative of how we feel about ourselves? You know, maybe you're someone that's really humble. Maybe you never tell anyone or let anyone know about the amazing things you've done. That will reflect in what is coming back to you from a universal perspective based on law of attraction, based on manifestation, but also like how can you flex, how can you like brag about the hard work that you've done or the awards you've won or the amazing things that you've done? How can you include that in your digital world to like really build yourself up and just be honest with the world about all the amazing things you've done? And the last thing on social, take a close look at who you follow on every platform and unfollow or unfriend or mute anyone that doesn't fit your life now. You know, maybe that means you've drifted apart, your values no longer align, their content no longer serves you, or maybe you met them at a party five years ago and you no longer need to be connected. I think for me, I looked at that too when I was looking at who I followed on Instagram. I'm like, oh, I'm following tons of people that I knew from high school or college who are incredible, like no shade. I love where I grew up and I love the people I was connected to. But, you know, from a perspective of what, content or information is inspiring me every day it's it might not be that you know for where I'm at in my life it might not be that and sometimes that changes for me sometimes I want to see um information that's spiritual sometimes I want to see memes that are funny like it may change all the time and that's okay so after we do anything like this whether you take a week to do it or a day I highly recommend, you know, after you finish the technology edit or just some of the practices that I shared today to put our phones down, you know, to shut off your computer, to do a little tech detox. You know, you just spent a lot of time online and in the world. You just released and dissolved a lot of cords to a lot of people and accounts and places and versions of yourself. So maybe spending the full day without any technology and see how freeing it feels. You know, I did a five-day silent retreat and it was a digital detox as well and it was life-changing. You don't need to be doing a silent retreat or anything like that, but you can really, really think about taking a technology detox and how powerful that would be for you. Technology is really this space where the more connected we are, the more disconnected we are from ourselves. So I always think about that whenever I lose a connection to my intuition or whenever I feel like, I'm not really connected to my soul or my purpose or if I'm feeling really lost, I can almost always track it back to how much time I'm spending online. My ego definitely gets the hit. 
every day of, hey, you got followers, you got stuff to do, you got stuff to create, you've got people to impress. And, you know, that is the ego, it's not the real self. So as we work through the digital portion of the life edit, always remembering that these versions of ourselves are not the capital S self. As much as we want to try to fit our three-dimensional selves into these two-dimensional phones, into our two-dimensional lives online, we will never be able to do so. So it is normal to feel like you're never fully expressed as the highest version of you online. It is normal to feel like your profiles, your social media, your emails, your desktop never fully represents you because you are changing in every moment and in every day. That is okay. It's actually good that you kind of have a, a life that exists outside of the social and digital world. But it is good to try to see it as an extension of your life and who you are and also one that you can keep boundaries with. So boundaries is really, really important when we think about the digital world and digital landscape you know, the relationship with technology is such a deep one because there's so much of that ego identity within technology. You know, as someone that is a content creator, someone that is an influencer, whatever you want to call it, there's so much. Every time I'm on my phone, I'm like, but I'm working. I'm working. <laughs> and I'm sure so many people do that too. I'm working. I'm relaxing. I'm checking emails. You know, I'm doing all these things. We are just so tied up. So how after you do this clear out, can you really, really just let those old timelines dissolve those old, old chords dissolve, how can you just totally reset to being present in the present moment with the capital S self? I would suggest too, from an energetic perspective, after you've gone through this process, you can take some time to reflect. So you're gonna take time off of social media, off your phone, maybe take a day or two, and then reflect on this experience. Reflect on doing some of these practices, a little bit of the digital portion of the life edit that I shared here. You can think about, you know, what did I notice about my thoughts when I was looking at old photos of myself? What did I notice about what I was thinking about when I was looking at my old Facebook? How did I react to reading old emails from five years ago? You know, what did I think about when I looked at my desktop? What did I um, feel when I was going through all of my apps on my phone? There can be so much that comes up and we can really, really get clear about how we feel about ourselves, any limiting beliefs, any wishes, desires, emotions, any judgments that we have about ourselves when we're working through this process because, you know, that reflection or that hologram, as I like to say, that we create in the digital world can really be a place where we're kind of seeing it as a little bit of a mirror, like a very small mirror, but a little bit of a mirror for how we show up in the world. So I'm hopeful that was helpful for you. Just a little bit of the technology portion of the Life Edit. Again, in the Life Edit program, which is coming out soon, I have five different sections that really, really go deep with energetics, law of attraction, manifestation, feng shui, into how you can edit your life. I am so proud of this course and program. I'm so excited to take you through it. In the curriculum, it's broken down into six sections. The first is technology and then finances, spatially and your home, your wellness routine, your mental space and your relationships. We also have Life Edit Essentials within the program. It has a list of favorite resources and products that help you with your Life Edit. There also is um, meditations and visualizations. I have a playlist for each. We have rituals for each part. So I really wanted to make sure that, again, we're covering the woo-woo part of it, the energetics, and then we're also covering the tactical part of your life to align to that highest self version. So really, I created, you know, a really actionable program with the Life Edit to help you clear out anything that doesn't serve you, whether this is in your home, with your finances, with technology, with your body, your mind, your relationships, your mental space. And when you're able to release these things, you feel more clear, expansive, and you'll have more room for what really, really matters. You'll be free to embody the highest version of yourself. I cannot wait to welcome you into the program. I hope you also were able to do the free Life Edit mini challenge, which is super powerful. It was five days of actionable insights and parts of the Life Edit that you can apply to your life today. This Life Edit course will have six live calls with me where we're going to be really going into the... Um, 
energetics and the woo woo of things. So what is coming up for you? How can we clear that? How can we address it? How can we use those beliefs, those um, things that are coming up as a guide for us for where we want to go in the future and any work that we need to do in our life as we're aligning to the highest version of ourselves. So I can't wait to guide you. I really appreciate it. You can go to episode 294, the life edit, which is kind of a high level of the life edit the first time I did it if you want more on this. And I'm excited to hear what comes up when you do a digital digital life edit. It'll be really powerful and you're just going to feel amazing, which is always my goal. Okay, I will see you in the program. I love you so much. Such a good one. Thank Thank you you so much, everyone, for listening. Thank you for sharing with friends. You can do a lot of the practices and principles in this part of the Life Edit today, so it's really helpful for you to share with them. Again, the Life Edit mini challenge is now live. You can go to lifeeditbychrista.com and sign up for that, and it will give you five days of actionable resources and free insights into the Life Edit program, which will be live in April. It's going to be a group program hosted by me. It's going to be incredible. I could not be more proud of this. It's something that I have been working on for quite some time. And you can also listen to episode 294, which is the original Life Edit episode by me quite some time ago to get a little bit more inspiration if you want more Life Edit today. And thank you to our sponsors for this episode. All sponsor information, discounts, and links are in our show notes as well as on almost30.com. Thank you to Safe Sleeve, Seed, HoneyBook, Peak Tea, and Native. Again, all discount information are in our show notes and on almost30.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon. Thank you.